In eighth grade, my life changed a lot. My move from a small private school to a huge public school came with many challenges, but the most notable difference was science fair. Yes, science fair, the bane of most people's existence, but the love of mine. I love it for everything I've learned about the content of my projects and myself, the friends I've made, but most of all, the hope it's given me for our collective future. I'm 15 years old, making me, like the rest of you, a member of Generation Z, known for our technology dependence, memes, and nihilism. We have more than enough reason to be scared. Climate change, the fires in Australia, still no water in Flint, Michigan, endangered animals, needing new fuel and power sources, and deforestation and desertification, to name a few. But I'm a firm believer that many of our problems can be solved through science, and that our generation is uniquely suited to tackle these problems due to the values of Science Fair. Science Fair allows education in whatever you want in any direction you want. After all, there's no, never only one answer, solution, or approach to a problem, which in itself can be viewed from different angles. Science Fair is the best escape from the standardized testing focused classroom where the textbook is king. Classrooms give us our knowledge, while Science Fair allows us to acquire it hands-on, involving both imagination and discipline. Seeing these unbelievable projects, I know firsthand the blood, sweat, and tears behind these trifold boards, and I know that our future is safe because these science fair kids are answering questions to make our world better and they are gearing up to tackle the next problem and continue doing so for the rest of their life. Creativity is a skill that can be developed and science fair teaches it, crucial because creativity is the most valuable tool for the 21st century and science fair is the definition of creativity, especially at the level where kids care. They aren't just looking up a project to make a grade, they're creating or finding something incredible. Science fair wasn't always that way though. The first science fair in the United States was held in 1928 as an outcome of the progressive nature study movement, which encouraged children's appreciation and learning about science. Sarah Scripps, a history professor at the University of Wisconsin at Stevens Point, who has studied science fairs, said that after World War II, science fairs took on a dimension of national security Instead of being about children's learning and general appreciation of science, they became more about grooming a workforce. And projects changed drastically. Participants became competitors, and earthworm dioramas became scientific claims and prototypes. Colleges and companies are seeing the value in encouraging science fairs, offering up to hundreds of thousands of dollars in scholarships, internships, and special awards. In Texas, where I'm from, Texas A&M University has a monopoly on science fair competitions, and Regeneron sponsors the two most prestigious global science fair competitions, the International Science and Engineering Fair and the Science Talent Search. We are the next workforce, and science fair participants are being recognized as such because we are ahead on solving worldly problems through current and future market and technology trends specifically that of the ever-rising importance of engineering. According to Business Insider, five of the most critical problems facing this and the rising generation are lack of employment, food and water insecurity, government corruption, safety, well-being and security issues, and climate change and destruction of nature. These five monumental problems are being tackled through three of TORDS Data Science's top technology trends for 2020. Hyperautomation, which is artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, and neural networks, democratization of technology, and autonomous things such as cars, drones, robots, and other appliances. Across the board, science fair innovations will create employment opportunities. Say someone wants to take a prototype created in science fair and turn it into a marketable product. People from many different professions, from manufacturers, construction workers, and delivery truck drivers, to lawyers, accountants, researchers, and developers will be involved and employed in this endeavor. Science fair projects are possible and are purposeful because of democratization of technology or accessibility. Projects across all ages and levels are increasingly high level, mainly due to the fact that we have access to things we didn't before. Computers used to be the size of this room, and now there are $8 microcontrollers the size of my finger. 
This introduction of accessibility also maintains a conclusion of accessibility because a main purpose of many of these projects is to create a method or device that is cost effective. And of course, by making it cost effective, it is more accessible to the average person. And now, in order to show the more specific solutions to these problems, I'm going to highlight some of my friends' research. And let me preface this by saying that these brief descriptions do not do their projects justice. Rachel Mommen has been working on increasing moisture retention in plants for desert agriculture. Raghav Ramke has created an autonomous drone for pollination. And along the same vein, Risha Valera created an autonomous drone to plant and harvest fruits. Kevin Meng is currently working on the use of machine learning to create a fact-checking system. And Navya Ramakrishnan also used machine learning, but this time implemented to create a system to predict epileptic seizures. Car safety is also a huge problem tackled, especially in the race for the new autonomous vehicle, but in, it's tackled in many different ways. Danielle Furman is creating a method that leverages mechanical advantage to help people stand and move them in and out of cars. And I am currently working on, the, on optimizing automotive seating position to reduce injury severity for short stature drivers. These are all projects of teenagers. Kids just like us, who like playing sports and listening to music and goofing off, but are also affecting change. We are nihilists, yet we are lucky that members of our generation are taking this fear, taking responsibility, and doing something productive with it. Sarah Scripps said that science fairs took on a dimension of national security. Now, in our insanely interconnected world, science fair is global security. We need to trust ourselves and give ourselves a lot more credit. We are Generation Z, and it is our responsibility to use the tools at hand to make tomorrow better. We are the next workforce, and STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, is indisputably the way of the future. And the United States, who sends the most ambassadors to the International Science and Engineering Fair of any country, only 5.5% of Americans aged 5 to 18 compete in science fairs. This discrepancy is unacceptable, and we need to fix it. Science fair doesn't have to be daunting or reserved for certain people or um, dreaded. Each and every one of us can use STEM to help the world, and this is how. You need a foundation of being open, conscientious, and disagreeable. Take social risks, and remember that your ideas are just that, ideas, without being, being willing to challenge the status quo. Pay attention to your what ifs and your whys and your that'd be cools because your ideas are valuable. Don't worry about the scale because no project is too small. Seemingly small problems are often widespread and important. Just find a problem and create a solution. Apply your own knowledge and put your own twist on it. The project might have been done before, but not by you. So don't worry about revolution, but evolution. So much has already been done that everything is evolution in one way or another. And it is this basis that makes so much of what we have done and can do possible. So ask yourself, how can I apply this idea, this technique, this software? How can I appeal to another niche? How can I make this more, more cost effective, easier to use, more versatile? What would I have done differently if I had done this the first time? How can I improve something already out there and just get out there and do something? Your project might not change the world, but it'll make someone's life better. And if each and every one of us are making someone's life better, the world will be better. That's incredible, and we are all capable of the incredible. Yeah.